you ever been cheated on? It was gross and slobbery and truly disgusting. And I was just wondering if he's a good kisser. Could you tell me more? Oh my god, that is how we tried to do it. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Victoria Garrick, and today we are doing a girl talk Q&A. I am so excited. Literally, I have like set up my room to be all cute and comfy, like we're at a sleepover. Not to mention I'm wearing my like unicorn, oh, ignore my socks, they don't make my outfit cute. I'm doing a unicorn pastel PJ, oh, ooh, ooh, PJ vibe, because we're about to get so real about a million girl things. So I had you guys submit questions on my Instagram and there were so many good ones. I'm honestly probably going to have to make another video if not two other videos because I could not answer everything in one. But I did select some of my favorites and the ones that were written a lot. So I'm gonna be going through those right now. Okay, let's get started. When did I get my first period? We are really jumping right in. I think I got my first period when I was like 13 or 14. I don't really remember the exact moment. I know everyone thinks it's gonna be like this day they remember for the rest of their lives. I really don't even remember. But I have something called polycystic ovarian syndrome, also known as PCOS to the cool cats. And basically, long story short, my hormones are a little bit out of balance and my period is irregular. So for me, I actually had to start birth control pills at the age of 14 to just get my period once a month because without birth control, my period won't really come or it'll be really irregular. So the doctor recommended that to regulate it, I get on birth control. How do you play through bad cramps if you're an athlete or deal with your period on long game days? That's a really good question. And fortunately, I have a very light period and it's never really caused me a lot of cramping and issues. However, I have some friends who like their period week is like their death week of the month. So it really affects all women differently. I did have moments where the cramping was so bad. It's like, oh, I can't walk. Oh my God, I can't walk. And that would definitely happen, but it would come and go pretty quickly. I fortunately didn't have anything like that during a game. I think during a few practices, I was like cramping really bad. And then after like 20 seconds or 15 seconds, it went away and I could like keep going. But I hope most people maybe have a female coach on their staff or a trainer or a female captain on your team who you can just be like, yo, I have my period, the cramps are really bad and you just, I need to sit out or I need to do this or that. Next question, do I have body hair? How do I deal with it? <laughs> yes, I have a lot of body hair. Fun fact, I'm actually 50% Greek. So that makes me very hairy. At least I like to think that that's where all my hair comes from. I was actually really insecure about my arm hair. You can't see it well in this video, but I'm gonna insert a picture. And growing up, I was so insecure. You guys, I used to bleach my arm hair to make it like white or blonde because I was so insecure about it. I remember if I was like sitting next to guys in class, I would like wear long sleeves or keep my hands under the table because I didn't want them to see it. I also have hair on my back and I have upper lip hair and I have hair on my toes and I have hair on my fingers. Oh, I also have a happy trail. Oh my God, this is TMI. And also I have like one really cute chest hair that comes in every once in a while. But yes, I'm hairy. I have hair everywhere. Most girls have hair. It's nothing to be insecure about. And it's so annoying because society puts this pressure on women to be hairless, yet guys can be as hairy as they want and we have to be like so ashamed or insecure about our hair. You do not need to be shaving, waxing, getting rid of all your hair to be beautiful. It's just whatever is most comfortable for you. What about nipple hair? Got that too. How do I shave down there? Hair removal methods for down there. What is down there? This is totally up to you. It is once again, personal preference. I have waxed, I have shaved. It really just depends on how I'm feeling. I've also not done those things and just been natural. I feel like I've really come into my womanhood by accepting my body hair and not always trying to get rid of it and hide it. And it can be really freeing to embrace your body hair and not feel the need to get rid of all of it. That said, I think my preferred method is a wax because you just get the wax done. You don't have to worry about it for a few weeks, but it is painful. So it's more convenient and less expensive to just shave. <laughs> Wait, you guys, I know I just talked about having upper lip hair, but this person said upper lip hair is a common and is it treatable? <laughs> treatable. First kiss story. Okay, so my first kiss story haunts me. I like to block it out of my mind and pretend it never happened. But long story short, I really wanted my first kiss. I was in eighth grade. I just convinced myself I kind of liked this guy. And we went to the movies and we kissed and it was gross and sloppery and truly disgusting. And the next day, I think we broke up. 
And from that point on, I was literally so traumatized by my first kiss experience being disgusting that I did not kiss another boy for two years. So then my sophomore year of high school, I got my first boyfriend, which I can jump into a little bit, and we kissed. And he was a year older than me. Scandalous. I don't even remember. I blacked out because I was so excited to kiss him that like we leaned in, it went black. We leaned out and I was like, I have no idea what happened. How many relationships have I been in? Ugh, this is, depends how you count it. I've been in two relationships that I would consider real relationships. One is with Max and then one is with a guy I did in high school. But then I've of course had things. I would say I've had a thing with like, three people, but they weren't my boyfriends. Have I ever been rejected? Yes, I have been rejected specifically by this boy from middle school, high school that I had the biggest crush on for so many years. I was the girl that he sometimes texted like, I just want to like love a girl and like be in a relationship. And I'm reading, I'm like, okay, like <laughs> here I am. And so then one day I finally was like, do you ever think about us that way? And he was like, no, I think of us more as friends. And I was like, ah, and I threw my phone away. But I was so bitter about getting rejected by this guy that I went and I wrote a song on my guitar. I thought I was gonna be a pop star in high school. And so I wrote this song and it's actually like a bop. It's really good. And I like, I rhymed his name with like this awesome chorus. Um, can you, what, what is that? You, you want, you want me to play the song right now? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. Ah! If this video ever got a million views, which it definitely won't, I'll sing the song. And then I've also been rejected multiple times in college when I like thought a guy was cute at a bar and I was flirting with him and he wanted a girl that he thought was prettier than me. And then you get rejected, mm. worship to the bar, the party, hoping to see the guy who kissed you last week and he's kissing the mm. Have you ever been cheated on? <laughs> So, about that high school relationship I mentioned, I dated this guy who was older than me. And one weekend, I went on a visit to Columbia for volleyball. And long story short, that weekend I was gone, there was a party. And I'm sorry, I'm laughing while I tell the story because I still have not ever had the answer said to me and I want to know it, but I know it, he cheated. My then boyfriend had slept the night at this party and shared a bed with a girl. For sure that night, my boyfriend went to sleep in a bed with another girl who was also asleep. And he claimed for months that all they did was sleep. And my dumb, dumb little heart believed it. But I was very suspect. Natalie and I did something crazy when I'm calling her. This is clearly the funniest thing we've ever done together. Found the girl who he shared the bed with on Facebook. And I was like, Natalie, you got to message her and ask her if they hooked up. How do we even start it? I'm super interested in this guy, i.e. Vic's boyfriend. And I was just wondering if he's a good kisser. Could you tell me more? Oh my God, that is what we tried to do it. We thought we were so sly by like sneaking in like, hey, I think I'm into this so guy. Sly. I want to know if he's a good kisser. Could you tell me? Because if she said yes, we would know that they kissed. Oh my God, that is cringe. To this day, like hand on the grave, he cheated. Do you think so? Yes or no? 100%, I will testify to it now. <laughs> Next question, what is your opinion on sex? Sex before marriage, intimacy, and when you should lose your V-card. To me, sex is something that is the most intimate, sacred, special, uniting thing you could do with another human. I mean, the act of it could conceive a human. It's like magical, it's amazing. It's this very special thing. And I've always valued it that way. So personally, I am someone who wants to preserve that intimacy and that sacredness for someone I am in love with and someone who loves me back. Someone I can trust, someone I can count on, someone who's never gonna judge me, someone who treats me with respect and values me and that I can just trust with my whole heart and my whole body. So personally, that is my philosophy on sex and intimacy and that is the value I've set for myself uh, from a very young age. I had that belief and I've kept that through my life. That said, everybody is different. It is your body and your choice. And I am not saying that anything different than how I approach it is wrong or slutty or shameful, absolutely not. I have many friends and have had many teammates who do not think of it the same way as me. That's okay, they love their lives, they love the relationships they have, and we're different. So 
You know, this is something that you really have to figure out. So really spend time to think about um, what's gonna make you the most comfortable um, and the most happy. And that's, you know, a personal choice. You don't seem like the super partying type. How do you deal with that as a hard to find your group in college? <laughs> You read me well, sister, because yeah, that's just never been me. It's not me. I don't love drinking. I don't love being under an influence of any sort. Even like the laughing gas at the dentist's office made me uncomfortable because I felt like I wasn't myself. And I kind of own that as like my MO. I mean, if I ever did go to parties and like have fun and drink, it was always like, oh my God, like look at Vic. Like I was like that girl and I kind of still am. Something though too is I definitely get people who are like, oh Vic, like why aren't you drinking? Or why aren't you having fun? You know, that's something that has always been irritating for me and frustrating um, is the idea that I'm not having fun because I'm not doing what everyone else is doing. But overall, my real friends and my real homies know how I am. They never pressure me and um, you know, it's just personally how I like to be. How do you keep a healthy long distance relationship? Well, fun fact, I did a video about this with Max, so check that out. What do you wear under spandex to not have underwear lines as a volleyball player? Are we supposed to wear underwear? How do I get rid of the panty lines? I believe I started wearing thongs um, when I was playing volleyball to avoid the underwear line. I also know people who go commando under their spandex. It's totally a personal preference, but yes, I wear a thong to avoid panty lines. How can I be confident with my height? I'm really tall. Did your teammates ever say anything about this? This is a great question, and I actually used to be insecure about my height. I'm 5'9", but even wearing heels, I felt like I'm so much taller than the guys. I'm so much taller than all my friends, and it made me feel masculine because we have this idea from society that beautiful women are small and little. And so when I felt big and tall, I didn't feel like that. But then when I got to USC, I had this teammate. She was so beautiful, and she was like 6'3". And the first time we ever all went out as a team, I wore like gym shoes because I was like, I don't wanna be tall. And this girl walked in with like wedges this high. Now she's like six, seven, six, eight. Stunning, the confidence. She just walked in the room like so tall and I was changed. I was like, wow, she doesn't care about what people think. She doesn't care about if the guys are shorter. She just is doing her and embracing her body. And so that was inspirational to me. And then from that point on, I have worn heels and wedges shamelessly. If you're shorter than me, that's your problem. Look up. <laughs> Do you believe in that you have to love yourself before you can love anyone else thing? Yes, 1000%. I do believe in this. I actually wrote like, the longest Instagram caption about this this past Valentine's Day. So if you guys actually want the full story of how I realized I had to really love myself before I could love anyone else, you should check out this Instagram post. Um, this is the date, so you can find it on my feed. But yes, I learned kind of the hard way that I have to love and accept my flaws and insecurities because I'm the only person that can do that for me. No one else can do that for me. Not even the perfect guy or girl, not even your soulmate, not even your mom or dad. You have to be that person for yourself. I have stretch marks and I'm only 14 and I feel guilty. Is it normal to have stretch marks or is it unhealthy? It is so normal to have stretch marks. I have stretch marks on my thighs and it's normal. It's a natural thing that happens when your body's growing. I had my first stretch marks at like 13 because I was getting taller. You know, this girl on my team who was a model, literally a model with like a big time company and so thin, she had them on her hip. And I remember seeing them and being like, you have stretch marks, but you're so perfect and skinny and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, yes, no one is immune. So many people have them. Okay, we are nearing the end. How do you know if you have a toxic friend? I would say you'd know if you have a toxic friend if you don't feel good around this person. I think the people you want to surround yourself with are gonna lift you up, make you feel like the best version of yourself, make you feel good about yourself, make you feel smart, confident. And so if you're constantly around someone who just makes you feel negative and they're condescending and they're rude to you, they're probably a toxic friend. On that same note, someone said, how do you deal with not having a large friend group? This is something I can personally relate to. I have not for about four years had a girl group. I've had some best friends in different places, 
Um, I've had people on my team who I love individually, but it's not like the whole team. And for a while I was really, really insecure about not having the group, like the girl, the six or seven or 10 girl group. And we all text each other, we chat, we Snapchat. There's so much that I can get into with this. I honestly feel like I should make a separate girl talk video, like just on friends, like toxic friends, friends talk badly about you, friend groups, being excluded from friend groups. If you're interested in that, comment down below because I would love to make another Girl Talk video and really focus on that stuff. So yeah, let me know. But overall, I think what I have grown into and come to realize over the past year or two battling through this, you know, lack of a friend group is that why do I need one? Like I'm so content. I get such great, amazing friendship from the few best friends that I do have that why do I, why is that not good enough for me? Why do I also need a group? Um, so I think I've come to be really grateful and appreciative of the individual best friendships I have. The other thing too is like, I know a lot of girls who are in that quote unquote friend group that they have the cute pictures and they go to the events together and they don't like each other. Like they talk badly about each other. They exclude people from the group. Like I see it all the time with these groups I quote unquote want to be a part of is very rarely is the group like actually thriving and everyone's nice to each other. And it's this perfect image we have in our mind. So that said, I've tried to be really present with the best friends I do have who are so incredible to me and trust that along the way, you know, I'm going to create my own little group with all of the people who I love. Well, that is all of the questions I have for this Girl Talk Q&A. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you felt like you're having a little sleepover. I certainly had so much fun. I love talking about stuff like this and doing stuff like this. So I hope you enjoyed it too. If you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I will be responding to everyone. And also you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, or Twitter if you're interested. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you in my next video.